ASTM D2594, originally published in 1969, has been used continuously by the U.S. textile industry to measure the stretch and growth properties of knitted fabrics. This method is intended for two apparel types, comfort stretch, loose fitting, and form fitting, excluding fabrics for girdles or other high support items. This standard test method requires that five specimens from each fabric direction, length and width, be tested. The specimen dimensions are 15.5 by 5 inches. The whale direction specimens will be marked and cut so that the long dimension of the template is parallel to the length direction of the fabric. Similarly, the coarse direction specimens are marked and cut with the long dimension parallel to the width direction of the fabric. After the specimens are cut out, each is folded in half lengthwise, forming a loop when the short edges are sewn together with a 0.5 inch seam. Then, benchmarks of 5 inches are placed on the fabric in a central location on one side of the looped specimen. This marking creates the gauge length of the original distance. The apparatus for performing the stretch and growth measurements is a frame with slots for positioning specimen hangers. The hangers consist of a triangle-shaped upper and lower metal form into which metal rods can be locked into place to hold a specimen. For the stretch measurement, a metal rod is inserted through the looped specimen and secured into the metal hanger form. The specimen is then placed onto the stretch frame, after which another rod and hanger assembly is inserted into the specimen loop. With the hanger assembly positioned so that the sewn seam is at the top of a rod, secure the hanger in the slot on the upper end of the frame. A ruler, graduated to read percent, is attached to the center of the upper middle benchmark. Then, attach a tensiometer to the lower hanger assembly and pull the indicator cycle between 0 and 5 pounds force, comfort stretch, four times for a cycle of 4 to 6 seconds. The fifth time, pull the tensiometer to the 5 pound force level and hold for 5 to 10 seconds. Then measure to the nearest 1%. If preferred, a ruler graduated in 1 millimeter increments can be used, but the percent stretch will need to be calculated from the exact distances recorded. If semi-form fitting fabric was being tested, the tensiometer would be cycled and read at 10 pounds force. Two length, whale, and two width, coarse, direction specimens are needed for stretch testing. For growth testing, three specimens in each fabric direction are used. A different lower hanger assembly is used for growth testing. The triangle-shaped metal form has a beaded chain that will allow the looped specimen to be locked in an extended position for a fixed period of time. The specimen loop with the sewn seam is placed in the upper hanger assembly. Insert the ruler in the middle of the top benchmark. Hang the specimen on a slot along the supporting frame. Insert the lower hanger assembly and extend the specimen to the 15% stretch point for the length whale direction specimen and secure the extension distance by pulling the beaded chain into a lower slot on the frame. For the width direction, coarse specimens, the specimen is extended to the 30% point distance. Load all of the whale and coarse direction specimens for a sample sequentially. After two hours, the chain assembly is released and removed from a specimen. After 60 seconds, the percent growth, or if measuring distance, is recorded for growth calculation. Repeat the release at 60 second intervals for the measurement of each subsequent specimen. After one hour, measurements are recorded again. If performing growth testing on semi-form fitting fabric, the extension percentage points to be used are 35 for the whale direction and 60 points for the coarse direction specimens. Sometimes companies prefer to use the term recovery instead of growth. The terms growth and recovery are mathematical reciprocals. That is, 3% growth would be the same as 97% recovery based on the same percentage of stretch. Can a fabric have too much stretch and or growth? This question can be somewhat difficult to answer 
as each knitted fabric construction with or without stretch yarn and different fiber contents may have different percentages of stretch as performed by ASTM D2594. Fabric processing and garment washing processing can affect the amount of stretch a fabric exhibits. But the significant impact of repeated force that exceeds the fabric's functional stretch capacity will influence the fabric's growth to a point where the fabric will bag, or growth is so great that the garment will not return to a satisfactory distance. We sometimes see this happen on garments at the knee of pants, the elbows of sleeves, loose neckbands, and the seat of pants. So the answer is the one we never like to hear. It depends. For brands and their manufacturing and sourcing partners, stretch and growth properties are managed through engineering the fabric to establish performance specifications. This is sometimes influenced by consumer complaints and returns.